Hi guys, it is a fine spring morning here in the end times in paradise in St. Croix Virgin Islands. We have somehow survived another weekend of partying and stumbled into Monday morning, March 21st, 2016. So time to get back to business and the business of your all doomsday prophet and the chronicler of the downfall of global industrial civilization is doing what he always does on Monday morning which is bringing you my economic meltdown roundup rant where I go on the pages of the mainstream media to bring you more examples of how the global industrial economy is bringing down the planet but before I get into the mainstream media just have to stop here at the alternative media at alternet Dot com where we see uh, an interview reprinted from Il Manifesto featuring an interview with Noam Chomsky titled Republicans are a danger to the human species. <coughs> After so many years of giving alarming interviews, Chomsky is more cynical than ever that we can avert global disaster. Take it away, Gnome. Quote, the human species is facing a situation that is unprecedented in the history of Homo sapiens. We are at the crossroads of a situation that has never occurred before. And very soon, we will have to decide whether we want the human species to survive into something that has the appearance of existence as we know it, <coughs> or if we want to create a planetary devastation so extreme that one cannot even imagine what could emerge. And I'll put the link to this interview, if I remember to. Getting down into this interview, this strangely worded question. I had to read this one a few times. <clears throat> question. Do you believe the leaders of globalization, the leaders of globalization, otherwise known as the global corporatocracy, otherwise known as the New World Order, have a strategy or attempted to create a controlled catastrophe that got out of hand. Uh, you, you, that just, just disentangling that question, but uh, here is uh, Noam Chomsky's answer to his view of the leaders of globalization. Quote, you would have to live under a rock not to realize the damage they, they have caused. The fossil industry for decades has been aware of the devastating consequences of an industrial policy based on oil. The executives of Exxon Mobil Corporation are not stupid, but rather dedicated to a specific ideology of the maximization of profits and stock prices. <coughs> Everything else is of insignificant value compared to this, meaning the corporate short-term bottom line. It's like for believers in the various fundamentalisms, be they evangelical Christians or Islamic extremists. They are like religious dogma before which there is neither doubt nor argument talking about the corporate bottom line among the globalists. Then I had to read this sentence a couple of times. We all know that it is very easy 
not to give credence to what we should believe as truth, but in this case, in this case, the global tor corporatocracy led by the fossil fuel industry, the refusal to want to believe the evidence of historical facts involves lethal consequences, close quote, meaning lethal consequences for our species and the rest of the planet. So anyway, I'll try to remember <coughs> to uh, put uh, the link to this excellent story. But anyway, let's get over to Yahoo News, the mainstream media's top 100 stories on the planet today. Guys, right here from AP, anybody who does not understand how the global corporatocracy is taking down a planet, how about this, this bizarre headline from Associated Press sounding somewhat like the onion. You can't make this shit up. Associated Press this morning. Two British ships arrive in Japan to carry plutonium to U.S., meaning this nuclear waste. So two British ships in Japan loading up on nuclear waste plutonium to ship it to the United States and dump it here. Two British ships arrived in eastern Japan on Monday this morning to transport a shipment of plutonium enough to make dozens of atomic bombs to the U.S. <coughs> for storage under a bilateral agreement. I assume the ag agreement between <coughs> the U.S. and Japan. Uh... So these ships will bring in 730 pounds of plutonium to the Savannah River site in South Carolina. The plutonium mostly from the U.S. and some from France originally had been used in Japan for research purposes. Uh, Japanese officials refuse to confirm the details, citing security reasons. Japan's own stockpile and its fuel reprocessing ambitions to use plutonium uh, for as fuel for power generation have been a source of international security concerns. Gee, th this goes on and on. So, uh, just bring it and dump it here to the U.S. We do have some good news. That's actually, uh, all, all kidding aside, several good news stories. I don't believe it on Monday morning. Anyone uh, claiming that, that Hambo Little Tail never has any good news to share. Well, here's some. Bighorn ruling could have ramifications on western grazing, at least meaning sheep grazing. A ruling by the 9th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals recognizing the connection between bighorn native bighorn sheep die-offs and diseases transmitted by domestic sheep could have far reaching ramifications on federal sheep grazing allotments in the West. There you go. Uh, good for uh, the court system doing its job. The, the new ruling gives the Forest Service legal backing to look at other areas other than Idaho in the West where domestic sheep grazing should be limited to protect bighorns. 
this is the environmental groups quote try to force the US Forest Service to do it if they're not going to do it on their own but maybe maybe after uh, this latest court ruling good for them I'm glad to hear at the bottom of this story the number of domestic sheep in Idaho has dropped from 2.7 million in the 1930s to about 185,000 today. Anyway, next, I'm not going to say at this point whether this is good news uh, following on the, uh, on the following up my my rant yesterday where I was wishing violent painful death and destruction to planet eaters <clears throat> we see former head of Brazilian miner Vale dies in plane crash uh, I, you know I'm not saying uh, I mean goodbye and good riddance to him but I guess six other people went down with him. Uh, <clears throat> Agnelli was famous. This is, what is his name? Former head of Brazilian mining giant Roger Agnelli. And news of his death stunned Brazil. This is that planet-eating bitch. I, I'm, I'm, just, th th I'm, I'm just tossing this out as one uh, one example uh, of how the global corporatocracy plays both sides of the political field. So you have that planet-eating bitch, uh, Dilma Rousseff, praised the CEO's, quote, extraordinary business vision. But... Dilma Rousseff's opposition leader, Asio Neves, said pretty much the same thing. So you have both of sides of the political spectrum in Brazil praising this goddamn planet eater's extraordinary uh, business vision. Agnelli took over Vale in 2001 and led the company until 2011 turning the mining giant into a world leader as a booming China's ravenous demand for raw materials sent commodity prices soaring there you go so uh, as long as we're talking about booming demand in China for the planet's resources uh, this no shit Sherlock story from Reuters news for anyone who does not understand this <clears throat> China's forest recovering at the expense of other nations. No shit, Sherlock. After taking a beating from decades of logging, China's forests have begun to regenerate, but the problem of deforestation may have shifted. may have shifted to other nations exporting their wood to the world's most populous country, researchers said on Friday. No shit, Sherlock. I talked about this a lot uh, when I was uh, talking about this book, The Devouring Dragon, the best book ever written on uh, China devouring the planet. 
talking about how China is, is, is cracking down on timber harvesting in their own country, bringing back their own forest, so they can just go all around the planet and rape and pillage their forest. Oh. Instead of cutting down its own trees to make products for exports, China has, been has become one of the world's leading timber importers, increasing deforestation overseas. No shit, Sherlock. Uh, the study cited Madagascar, Vietnam, and Indonesia, not to mention uh, Brazil and New Guinea and everywhere else, as countries that are felling their forest to fulfill Chinese demand, increasing climate change and hurting biodiversity in the process. And don't forget the little inconvenient truth that a large proportion of the wood products imported to China from as far away as Madagascar are used to make furniture for developed countries such as the good old USA and Europe. Are, are you connecting the dots here guys how the it, it always gets back to consumer and lifestyle choices. So uh, anybody blaming uh, Madagascar or China, uh, perhaps they want to look in the mirror. Uh, but anyway, as I say, we do have some uh, good news because at least there's going to be one forest, hallelujah, that China it is not going to rape and pillage to make furniture for the U.S. and that is Tasmania. Tasmania. Uh, as, as hard as they were trying, as we see, hallelujah, Australian government abandons campaign to log World Heritage Forest. The Australian government ended its push to log World Heritage listed forest on the southern island state of Tasmania on Sunday after the United Nations Cultural Agency, UNESCO, issued a report calling for the, the area to remain protected from logging. Hallelujah. Australia's government in 2014 sought unsuccessfully to have parts of the Tasmanian wilderness, about two and a half million acres of the island, to be removed from UNESCO's World Heritage listing to enable logging. Uh, a United Nations uh, report issued on Saturday said the entire area quote should be off limits to commercial logging in its entirety and that it does not consider a world heritage property recognized for its outstanding cultural and natural values uh, to experiment with commercial logging of any kind. On Sunday, both Australia's national and Tasmanian state governments adhered to the UN's request. Good all the United Nations saving the planet from China. As long as they're over there in China, I, I, uh, I mentioned this story in Saturday's Clueless Moron Roundup rant. Had to get somewhat of a chuckle out of this. China orders probe 
after polluting factory fined $90. China's Environment Ministry has ordered an investigation after a provincial environmental protection body fined a polluting factory $90 for dumping wastewater. Uh, I guess into a, a river. This is this chemical plant in uh, in Gaiu City, given the fine uh, as China's government has repeatedly vowed to get tough on pollution. which has fouled the country's air, soil, and water, prompting public ire, but enforcement of their great pollution laws is often lax. Do you think so? This is the Environment Ministry. Quote, after the news was released, it was called into the question by the public who thought that a fine of $90 was too low and insufficient to act as a deterrent to companies which break the law on the environment. Don't worry, the Environment Ministry was paying, quote, great attention to this case and has ordered an investigation and called for, quote, serious, serious punishments to be meted out. Yes, maybe uh, they will be fined $95. And finally, let's wrap up today's, uh, today's economic meltdown roundup rant with another good news story as we see tiny Vermont brings food industry to its knees on GMO labeling. Well, uh, I don't know about to their knees, but uh, good for tiny Vermont. Uh, and see General Mills makers of Cheerios announcing on Friday that it will start labeling products that contain genetically modified ingredients to comply with a new Vermont law show food companies might be throwing in the towel even as they held out hope Congress will find a national solution. Tiny Vermont is the first state to require such labeling effective July 1st. Uh, coming on the heels of, I could not believe this, that the United, that the U.S. Senate uh, actually uh, voting down a bill that would have blocked uh, such state laws. Uh, I, you know, unbelievably, uh, this Monsanto uh, supported uh, bill in the U.S. Senate uh, did not get enough votes, and uh, it looks like uh, they're not going to. Hallelujah. <clears throat> the food industry is still holding out hope that Congress uh, will prevent states from requiring uh, such labeling. Yes, and uh, so the fight goes on, but a tiny victory. And for the 100th time, I'm gonna say I am still on the fence about GMO foods themselves uh, being uh, a problem uh, I ate the shit out of uh, GMO foods myself. Uh, what it's about is, is about what they're modifying their organisms 
for and it is to withstand these boatloads of chemicals, these herbicides, these pesticides, uh, Roundup, soon to be Agent Orange, the, uh, the, these GMO crops are being designed to uh, <clears throat> be able to take more and more and more of these big agrochemicals being dumped onto them. This is going on in this country, ramping up more than ever in this country and on the entire planet. And this is what these defenders of GMOs, apparently they just don't get it. This little nuance, this, this, this peeling back the onion, one more layer of GMO foods to find uh, the lurking tiger. It, it is these goddamn uh, planet-eating uh, chemicals that are being unleashed on this planet due to the GMOs. And, uh, of course, uh, there's plenty of people who are pointing uh, to more and more evidence coming in that these things sure as shit cause a lot of problems. Uh, the, the evidence, the jury is out. And uh, until it gets, it, it, you know, all they're talking about, put it on the damn label. Anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap up this week's edition of my economic meltdown roundup rant to head back to the eco lodge to enjoy the fruits of <clears throat> the global industrial civilization while it still stands <clears throat> and uh, make me a breakfast burrito for the end times. The little dog is for a breakfast burrito. He says, bring on the breakfast burritos, Pop. <clears throat> but he sees a lizard. Bring on the collapse of global industrial civilization. I got lizards and crabbies to eat. My guys.